Carl is dead. Today we're going to be making a batch of 1920 style cinnamon rolls. And it's a recipe out of this book, Anyone Can Bake. It's a royal baking powder, I think. If I'm wrong, it'll, I'll either say it later or flash the name across the screen. A cooking book specifically for baking, and they recommend using their specific brand of baking powder. Yes. Um, it was sold in 1929 for $1.50 each. That is equivalent of $27 to $28 today uh, for inflation. So basically you're paying about $30 for a book this big. That includes quite a few recipes and actually has some nice little imagery on how to make stuff. And this is actually the page we're going to be working from. Making cinnamon rolls. I will be making some changes to the original recipe. I have another book from the 1930s that actually details making one of the steps in this because it does three things. You have to make a recipe for biscuits up to a certain point, and then you go to a different recipe for these Parker house rolls, and then you stop at a certain point, and then you go to the cinnamon roll recipe. Now, I have another recipe book from the 30s that has its own take on the Parker house roll. I follow that recipe for that specific thing in terms of adding a tablespoon of sugar per batch of the rolls. It's just something I like to do. You guys can do that or you don't have to do that. That's the only thing I add to it. And the one thing that I subtract from it is I don't put in the raisins that they recommend. Now, I have some items out and some of the things that I'll need, but I don't have everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a break, get those things out and in their little bowls for measuring, and then I'll be right back and get to the whole recipe. You guys, it'll be instantaneous. And I have all the ingredients. All right, so this recipe is pretty simple for a cinnamon roll recipe. There's no yeast to add. There's no rising you have to wait for. The one thing that you actually do have to wait for is one, preheating the oven to 425-ish. Our oven's a bit old, it's from the 90s, we think, and uh, the thermostat isn't exactly accurate, so we run it a little high, so I'm gonna put it at about 450. Um, but of course, if you have a more modern oven, Try to keep it around 425. Once all this is done and we have the rolls made and in the pan, they're gonna sit for about 20 minutes. Um, and then they bake for about 25 minutes. So after you do everything, all the hard stuff, there's a lot of waiting involved at the tail end of it. So just make sure you have quite a bit of time. I'd set aside about an hour and a half to two hours to make this whole thing and clean up. Um, just because of how overall intensive this is, not only with the amount of dishes that are gonna get involved, but also the amount of time it takes. And a lot of that time, I mean, almost an hour of it is spent with the oven. Now for the ingredients, um, for all of you who like to prepare it beforehand, this recipe calls for four cups of flour, eight teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, four tablespoons of lard. I'm gonna be using uh, the Morel Snowcap lard, but you can use whichever type you want. Um, it's also going to need two tablespoons of sugar. That is optional as that is something I prefer as it's a as a as it's a biscuit recipe that says very similar one to this one the only difference is is the one that I have from the 30s has a tablespoon of sugar my own preference because those were the rolls that I was making first and I like those rolls and I don't want to change it and suddenly it doesn't turn out as good um, you'll also want to have set aside two eggs I have two farm fresh duck eggs from outside um, but chicken eggs will work just as fine duck eggs I just prefer for baking. It makes it taste a little better in my opinion. And you'll also want to have a cup of milk. With all that said, I would have all the dry ingredients combined because that is what makes sense and what is usually most effective, but this recipe requires sifting the ingredients. So I'm going to have to sift the dry ingredients together, sort of trying to get it all done at once. Now this recipe needs you to sift it about two times. So I'm gonna have to sift all the dry ingredients together and then try to get it sifted as good as possible on the next go around. So I'm gonna take all the stuff that I'm gonna be sifting onto the oven here because I can't possibly reach over there. So unfortunately, um, I won't be able to be right there, but I'll show that and probably time lapse through it just for the sake of saving time. Or I could just talk through it while I'm doing everything. Um, for those of you who don't wanna see all this because sifting is pretty straightforward, um, skip to this time. But you want to make sure that everything's well sifted because even though it's not going to be a super fluffy cinnamon roll, um, it is going to be, um, you, you do want to get it semi-fluffy, you know, as fluffy as you can. So you just sift it. I'm going to sift each grouping twice 
because that way, if because I know I won't be able to get everything, I'll at least get, I'd say, a good portion of it, especially since some portions are going to be um, sifted more than twice. Um, I, it says to sift the flour before measuring, um, and with modern flour bags and the way flour is nowadays, that just isn't necessarily a practicable thing to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and not do that. Now, if you're using the type of sugar that I'm using, which is a larger grain, it's not going to really go through the sifter all the way. That's okay. The main thing is that you're breaking up, like I'm going to stick my clean ham in here and break up the little tiny bits of baking powder that don't want to break up. That's the big thing. You want the baking powder to be nice and sifted when you're done with all that. I'm going to take my one cup measuring and just scoop it back in and do that a second time. Now I won't get everything, but that's not the end of the world. Um, again, if you were sifting the flour before measuring, you probably weren't sifting all the flour that you'd end up putting in your recipe. One thing that actually does taste good with these is adding some vanilla with the wet ingredients. I think I've done that before. It adds a nice flavor to it. I, I like it. I'm not going to do that with this recipe. I'm going to do it again, minus adding the sugar and minus taking out the raisins, exactly as the recipe book says to. I, if, if this video gets good feedback, I'm going to definitely make some more old-timey recipes. One of those that I want to go ahead and show you guys how to make is Coca-Cola, making homemade Coca-Cola, not the cheap, easy recipe of, oh, we'll buy just some fruits from the grocery store, because that doesn't work. I've tried it. It doesn't work properly. It doesn't have the right food chemistry to get it to work. You have to go out and do a lot of research and figure out the best things to get for it, and then you have to kind of take some risks with it, too. Now, I'm not just talking about risks about turning out. I'm talking, well, although that is part of it, I'm talking about risks to your health. Um, I make it, I'd say once every couple months, I make a batch of syrup and just have it in the fridge until I want to drink myself some Coca-Cola, don't have to go to the store or anything, and I just make myself a glass, and there we go. And you can hear all that sugar still in the sifter. I just dump that back in there. So, sifter's done. And the flour is still going to be necessary for when I roll out the dough, but this is done as well. And now we have that. Sugar, I'm still going to need for the cinnamon mixture, but the baking powder is done. And now we're going to add four tablespoons of the lard. Now, the way that you're going to do this is you're going to mix it in. So you can do this a couple of ways. You can either use a power mixer or you can use your hands and tools that are you know run by your hands. I prefer doing the manual method because it feels more authentic to the era and feels more authentic to how someone would have made this food. And, it's specifically what the directions call for, for you to mix it in either with a metal fork or with your hands. But a mixer, a power mixer will do just as good. It's just something that I'm going to do personally. After you add in the lard, you'll mix in the eggs and the milk. And then once that's done, it'll get rolled out thinly. You'll put over your mixture and uh, then you'll roll it up, cut it up, put it in your pan that'll be covered in a different mixture and you put it in the oven after you let it wait for 20 minutes. I'm saying all that now in case people want to jump ahead and then wait for the part that I haven't covered yet because Lord knows I do lots of videos too. And I think butter would make a fine substitute for something like this and might actually be easier to be honest. But again, um, because of how much flour and ingredients it includes, I can't bring myself to experiment with this recipe. Honestly, I should experiment with the biscuit recipe and make two different batches to compare, although that's still wasting the same amount of flour, but I, at least I can compare the two and just see how it looks. And I'm sure that if it was uh, a bad change, it'd be pretty obvious. Now, the biscuit recipe that my wife makes is very similar to this, but you use self-rising flour, so it includes the salt and the baking powder, and it uses butter instead of lard, and it's really good. Now, I only put in two tablespoons initially, and that's because it's a bit easier to mess with um, two tablespoons of lard at a time, because it does need to get broken up. Again, if you don't measure it out perfectly, or you don't get all the lard out of the tablespoon, it's not the end of the world. It's The lard is more of a guideline for how much you're supposed to utilize. You know, it's just a, like a basic recommendation. Uh, I will say that if you guys have um, butter that you need to have sitting out, 
because you will need about two sticks of butter for this recipe. All right, now we're going to go ahead and add these two eggs and the milk. Once I dig out another little bit of a cavern. Again, if I happen to be mixing these together wrong, feel free to correct me. So if you end up starting to mix this and you have a situation where you just don't have enough liquid, add some more milk. It's not a problem. I mean, the big thing with this is having the right consistency. I have properly mixed the dough. That's about what it should look like. Ish. I mean, it's more yellow than what yours will probably look like because I'm using duck eggs. They've got a thicker yolk, so it brings out more of a yellow color. So, if you want that, use duck eggs. Figure out a way to use them. Okay, so apparently the video just kind of cut out there. Um, I guess my camera has a maximum allowance of about 30 minutes for video, which is lovely. But. That's fine. Well, uh, let's look at this all done. So, once your dough is uh, basically ready to go, slap it down. Don't need the bowl anymore, so I'll put that near the sink. And then I'm just going to go ahead and have my bag of flour nearby. Just want to make sure you roll it out. You want to make it nice and thin. However thin you make it depends on is, is what's going to affect how many uh, how many rolls you get and how thin the bread is. What you want is you want thinner walls. You want an overall evenness to it so that everything cooks properly. Now, when you make these, you want to try to get at least the two sides as even as you can, so that you don't have some monstrosity of a of a cinnamon roll from the end piece. Now these ends can be a little bit uneven. That's fine. You also want to roll it out in a way that you still feel comfortable rolling it up for the uh, for the main cinnamon rolls. I'm going to save this in case I need it and then I'll cut to the butter. With the cinnamon sugar mixture, you take light brown sugar or dark brown sugar if you prefer that, and you mix it with um, cinnamon. You will use whatever mixture you want. I personally use about one tablespoon of cinnamon to every third cup of brown sugar. For this, I've mixed two thirds cups brown sugar to two tablespoons. You want to spread this butter around. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll from here. So that means this line will be our sealing point. So this line, we won't actually have any cinnamon sugar on because that's what's going to sort of hold everything together because this butter will be connected with the underside of this dough. But I think I have just enough butter. Now, this isn't all the butter I need to use. There is also uh, butter that I need to cream with more brown sugar. You use six tablespoons of butter with six tablespoons of brown sugar. You cream that together and you spread that in your cast iron pan. And that was, I will say, the actual perfect amount that I needed for this. And then you take your mixture. It looks something like this. And you can spread it out however you want. I don't really have a method to, to any sort of this, this type of stuff. Some people use their sifters and they'll sift it through it. I find that that tends to separate too much of the sugars, although some people don't want it to be super grainy. Although I've never really had a problem with that. So you do it how you want to. Some people will pile it like that and then spread it around with a spoon. Now when you start here, that's gonna be the center. So if you are someone who likes a really cinnamon-y cinnamon center, if I can speak, um, you'll wanna pile it on there. The recipe doesn't call for any specific amount. They say just add it to your desire, basically. And honestly, I don't really like doing that because I'm not good at just guesstimating. And I'll just take the back of the spoon and I'll spread it around. Try to get it as even as possible. If I notice a gap in an important area like the center right there, I'll just fill it in. So I'm going to use all of it actually. There we go. So there we go. That is your cinnamon roll all done up. Now once you have it like this, then comes the fun part. You get to roll it. Now, the recipe doesn't say to do it, but honestly, before you do all this, it would be nice to have the pan creamed and all that ready to go. And I'll show that process once I move this over to the stove. Um, 
But I'm just gonna roll this up because I'm right here and might as well. You start by kind of, you know, giving this a nice little roll here, give it a nice little center. Just to get the roll going. Again, there's no there's no perfect way to do this. Cinnamon rolls are very forgiving. You just want to make sure that it actually rolls up into a log that you can then cut. If you can't cut it, then what the fuck is the point, right? And once you reach this part, you'll kind of do that. And you'll press down. Now, yeah, I used a bit too much flour on the countertop, not too much on the dough, just too much on the countertop. Just fine, that'll brush off. So it just doesn't want to seal properly. And I might have a bit floury, I might have uh, cinnamon rolls that are a bit floury, and they are a bit thinner because, again, I rolled out the dough quite a bit, probably a bit too much. But hey, my mistakes are your learning experience. You get to learn from me, whereas instead you would have made, might have made the same mistake. So in this configuration, you'll cut pieces about that size. You'll keep going. You know, I'm not really consistent, you know, about that big. Just enough to fit inside your cast iron pan. Before I do that, however, I need to cream the pan so that it is set up properly for the rolls. Because when I cut them, I'm gonna put them in the pan. So we will switch over to that and show you the process there. So I've got my six tablespoons of brown sugar. It's technically just over a third of a cup. A third of a cup's 0.333 of a cup. This is 0.375 of a cup. So I just did a mounding third cup plus a little bit of extra just to make sure it was perfect. And that right there is six tablespoons of butter that I've been softening next to the oven because I forgot that I didn't take out an extra stick of butter like I had mentioned to do so at the beginning of or around the middle of the video. So I've had it sitting here getting, uh, getting warm. I like to cut it up like this because it's just easier. The oven was just clean, so that's good. Good for me. Now this is easier if you're able to heat it up while you do so, but you can cream butter even if it's not necessarily uh, warmed up. It's just going to take you longer. Um, now you don't want melted butter. You have to use soft or hard butter. If you have melted butter, it will not cream properly. You can have butter that's melting, kind of like this one is, as long as you have the solid cream to go along with it. So you don't want it to get too warm too quickly. So trying to cream it on a stovetop piece with the stove on will not work. You're just asking for trouble doing that. And after a bit of mixing, you'll end up with something kind of like this. Now this isn't perfectly creamed yet. I still have to stir it some more, but it is getting there. The important thing is that everything is mixed up correctly. Now I'll go ahead and cream the pan. Now this is just creating a uh, an edge of sorts for it. And this will help with the dough. You don't want it too thick but you don't want it too thin. This will help bake it in, again, bake it into the dough and it adds a nice flavor to it and a nice finish to everything overall. It puts a nice glaze on the um, on the dough when you take it out of the oven and you'll see that once everything's done. After this you just wait 20 minutes and then you stick it in the oven for further 25 minutes and you're good. And you have yourself some homemade 1920s cinnamon rolls. You don't have to get it perfectly up on the side wall. But bringing some up on the sidewall does help. Now I'll go ahead and cut the rolls and you'll get to see the sizes that they're supposed to be within the, uh, within the pan. You want to cut them into about two inch pieces, which is just shy of as wide as an iPhone SE. So if you have an iPhone SE, you can use that as, as your um, reference. Or you can be a psychopath and use a measuring stick. I mean, your choice. Now these end ones are not perfect, but they act as a good little sacrificial piece.
all your different rolls. Now this pan is a little bit too big because you want them all to be combined as closely together as possible. So after backtracking on my uh, information, I usually use a smaller pan and in my um, sleep deprivation, I grabbed the bigger pan. Good news, I got the pan. I completely forgot that I used this pan, so this is what it should look like when you're about to put it in the oven. And it's been sitting for 20 minutes. So in the oven it goes. And wait, I'm gonna go ahead and set 20 minutes, check it, and then put it in for another five once all that's done. Then you guys will get to see the final result. So they're out of the oven after 25 minutes. It actually worked out perfectly. As you can see, the butter and brown sugar mixture that was put around the pan has risen in some areas. Now this is gonna need to get flipped upside down into a plate. And I don't know if I have the right kind of plate set out, so I'm probably gonna go look around for another one and do the flip and change up the camera's general area to kind of show you guys that the best that I can with the current resources I have. So let me see if I can actually get this done here. And if not, then I'll just have to not show you guys. But I want success more than I want to get it on camera. So, let's see, I know there's some liquid. There you go, your cinnamon rolls. Got one sliding off, so I guess that's gonna be the one that I grab for, uh, for a quick snack tonight. There you go. So, I've got my slice of my cinnamon roll and a little bit of homemade buttercream frosting on the top, which is just cream cheese, powdered sugar, and some vanilla, all blended together. Now, you can use plenty of stuff on these kind of cinnamon rolls. I've actually found that fig preserves are an excellent addition on the top of these things. And when our fig tree finally has some ripe figs, I'll show you guys how to make a recipe for that as well. And just about anything goes well with these. They're amazing, awesome. Um, I love them. Every single time I make them, it's just, they, they are honestly the best when they're fresh out of the oven. A bit hard to eat with, uh, with one hand holding the plate, but um, they're really good. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys not only enjoy, but hopefully make these cinnamon rolls as well um, at your own house. And let me know how it turns out. I highly recommend them. I mean, you can't go wrong with an old 1920s recipe like this. In the future, I hope to make more of these style videos along with my more typical historical content. So if you enjoyed, let me know. And if you've got any suggestions for other recipes that you'd want me to try out, go ahead and uh, tell me them in the comments below.